Priesthood power, when exercised righteously, unites men and women, sons and daughters, and families. Let's start at the beginning, at least the beginning of your earth life, and consider those times when the power and the authority of the priesthood becomes very important to you personally. You entered earth life as a baby. Most of you were given a blessing, a name, by one holding the authority to act in God's name. You began your earthly mission, and your name was recorded on the records of the church. This pattern was observed even before the birth of our Savior when Zacharias and Elizabeth presented their son to receive his earthly name and blessing. The child's name had been revealed to Zacharias by an angel. He was to be known as John, the forerunner of Jesus Christ. By the power of the priesthood, this blessing was given. When you were baptized and became a member of the church, baptism was the first priesthood ordinance in which you made a promise, a covenant. It opened the way for you to start on the path back to your Father in heaven. You were baptized by the same power and authority that John the Baptist exercised when he baptized Jesus Christ, our Savior, in the River Jordan. The gift of the Holy Ghost follows baptism and is the next essential ordinance of the gospel. You had hands laid upon your head by one having the authority of the Melchizedek priesthood, and by that power you were blessed to receive the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost can be a companion to you throughout your life. The Holy Ghost is given to guide you, teach you, comfort you, inspire you, and bear witness to you of the reality of the Savior and the truths of the restored gospel. The power of the priesthood and the importance of its restoration blessings came to have special meaning in my life when I was the age of many of you. I was just 15. My mother and father were miles away from our home. My grandmother was staying with me. While they were away, a serious ear infection developed and I was rushed to the hospital. The infection required major surgery and was carried out immediately. Following the operation, I overheard one of the doctors tell a nurse that the damage to my ear had been so severe that I would permanently lose my hearing and my equilibrium. When my parents arrived at the hospital and realized the seriousness of my situation, they knew what to do. My father and another Melchizedek priesthood holder, having the power and authority to act in the name of God, administered to me using the oil that had been consecrated by the priesthood for the healing of the sick. My father placed his hands upon my shaven head, which was mostly wrapped in bandages, and gave me a blessing. My mother was also impressed that she should place my name on the prayer roll of the Alberta Temple, where those in attendance would join their faith in prayer for me. It was the first time I knew that people could have their name placed on a prayer roll in the temple. In time, through faith and the power of the priesthood, my healing was complete. As a member of the church, have you felt the power of the priesthood in the administrations and blessings you've received? Have you received a father's blessing? Have you asked your father to give you a blessing at special times of need? Like the beginning of a new school year or during times of discouragement? Or when you're carrying a heavy responsibility? Or when you're struggling for understanding or experiencing temptation? These are times when you can receive that strength which you need. And in the absence of your father, you can ask your home teachers or the bishop or a special friend who's been ordained to act in God's name. I know these blessings can be a great comfort to you. As a member of the church, you have the privilege to receive another unique priesthood blessing, a patriarchal blessing. This blessing is given to you upon your request and worthiness by a patriarch ordained of God to this special calling. Patriarchal blessing can serve as a guide to you with promises which are predicated upon your faithfulness in keeping the commandments. I've read and reread my blessing hundreds of times. It's been an anchor, a comfort, and a guide to me. Through the authority of the priesthood, a patriarchal blessing can be yours to guide you and help you throughout your life. Another of the great priesthood ordinances designed to bless us was introduced by the Savior when the final hours of his earthly ministry were approaching. During the Last Supper, together, they were gathered, and while Jesus sat at the table with the apostles, he took some bread, and when he had blessed it, he broke it in pieces and passed it to them, saying, Take, eat, this in remembrance of my body, which I give as a ransom for you. He then took a cup and gave thanks and passed it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this, in remembrance of my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for as many as shall believe on my name for the remission of their sins. 
Each Sunday, young men who hold the Aaronic Priesthood prepare and administer the sacred ordinance of the sacrament. Every worthy member is privileged to partake and to receive the blessings promised in this priesthood ordinance. It is also by the authority of the priesthood. Both young men and young women are set apart to be messengers of truth and teach the gospel when they receive a call from a prophet of the Lord to serve a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Likewise, in the house of the Lord, the temple, all things are done by the power and the authority of the priesthood. In the temple, men and women are endowed and make sacred priesthood covenants, which are accompanied by promises and blessings. One day, every righteous young man and young woman will have the privilege and opportunity, if not in this life, in the eternities, for a celestial marriage and an eternal family. The highest blessings of the priesthood are conferred only upon a man and a woman together in the temple. This priesthood ordinance is necessary for exaltation in the highest degree of the celestial kingdom. As the Apostle Paul said, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. We're truly partners in priesthood blessings. And so we come together and we rejoice together as we recount the blessings we each receive as a result of the priesthood. It is a power which blesses us daily and prepares us for eternity.